It will protect our heritage, our environment and our rural communities, and it will provide a legal framework for decommissioning weapons in Northern Ireland. By any yardstick, Madam Speaker, that is a meaty Queen's speech that we intend to carry through in the period between now and the election. And in addition, of course, Madam Speaker, my right honourable friend, the Chancellor, will unveil his fourth budget next month. It will be a prudent budget. If we can safely cut taxes, we will. If we cannot, we will not. If we cannot, we will not. Either way, we have a responsibility to spend taxpayers' money wisely. And that is why we will be acting against benefit fraud. The measures we've taken already will save one and a half billion a year, but we now intend to save more. Every bit of fraud robs the taxpayer and deprives the genuinely needy of help, and I'm surprised the opposition chief whip scoffs at that particular thought of cracking down on benefit fraud. We will see how keen they are. We will see where they are when they vote on the dif distinct measures to actually deal with these problems. We intend, in a little way, there's a, there's a queue forming. I know, the, uh, I know the opposition party have produced a long list of interventions that they propose to produce for me because someone very generously left them on the uh, photocopier, Madam Speaker. <laughs> it, uh, If they could just shout the numbers, Madam Speaker, it would make life much quicker. I, it's, headed, uh, it's headed interventions on major, and I can look forward to questions on Europe, the economy, education, beef, crime, health and others. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing whether the members can actually remember them after the training they've undoubtedly had from the right honourable gentleman. Now, that, Madam Speaker, I do not think these were handed to the Honourable Gentleman. May I ask the Prime Minister a question of which I have not given him notice? <laughs> it is a common allegation about the Tory party that they look after their own first. And the Prime, Minister, the Prime Minister's seat is the, safest, is the safest Tory seat in the country with low unemployment and low crime. My seat has the lowest Tory vote in England with very high unemployment and very high crime. Why did the Queen's speech say nothing about achieving a significant reduction in unemployment for areas such as mine? And on the day that the National Commission of Inquiry into the Prevention of Child Abuse recommended that one thing that we need is a national register of offenders against children, why did the Prime Minister's Queen's speech leave out the register of paedophiles when all parties in the House would assist the government in passing it quickly into legislation. Well, on the second point, I will return to that in a few moments quite that directly. On the first point, as the honourable gentleman knows, unemployment has now been falling across every part of the United Kingdom throughout the last 30 months. And there's every indication that that is going to continue. But what creates a fall in unemployment is the right economic circumstances, a growing economy, low inflation, and the lowest possible interest rates. It can't be done simply by expenditure measures, as we've learned often enough in the period since the Second World War. So that is why I say the budget will be prudent. It will be prudent to ensure continuing growth, because in my judgment, that is the best way to get the honourable gentleman's constituents back to work. And I wish to see that for social reasons, as well as for other reasons as well. And we will continue to follow policies that try and put as many people as we possibly can back in proper employment. By proper employment, I don't mean artificially created.